So for this project I started with a 38 by 24 inch window that was divided into six sections. I flipped it over and put painter's tape along the back to help prevent any resin leaks. I did not seal the window at all. On the top it seemed like it was uh, sealed enough and then I painted uh, the window and around the bottom and the top and then next I took stained glass and I know I've done this for other videos you would think I'd have enough stained glass stems but I needed more so I went ahead and I cut up several sheets of stained glass into stems and um, as I've said before I'm not a stained glass expert but I did learn to cut stained glass on YouTube. There are many videos dedicated to stained glass and these people do it for a living and um, the best thing about it it's free so I would suggest that you watch some of those if you want to learn the correct way to cut stained glass. So um, after I was done cutting all the stain I gathered it all up into a onto a sheet and I dumped it into my 45 pound MJR tumbler. Some of those longer pieces I did have to end up breaking to fit them all in there. Now you can tumble the stained glass from anywhere to 12 hours to a week depending on the effect that you want. For this particular glass I just tumbled it overnight and um, that's you really only have to do it for like 10 to 12 hours to get the sharp edges off maybe even a little bit less and if you want it real rounded you can leave it in for up to a, a week but if there is any texture on the stained glass and you leave it for a week you may take the texture off of it next I traced out a rabbit I cut it out and then I took it and I taped it to the back of the window and I guess I had to do some touch up with my painter's tape that I had removed for some reason. And then I took Elmer's glue and I put it around the perimeter of the rabbit, the entire rabbit. And then I took two millimeter rhinestone chain that I had picked up on Amazon and I followed around the perimeter, perimeter and put it right on top of the clear Elmer's glue. It's important that you use clear Elmer's glue to do this because it is totally invisible once it dries and even with the resin on it. Um, now these rhinestone chains can be cut with the scissors and you'll see the black handled scissors. It's a heavy duty scissors. You could use a regular scissors but it'll be a little bit more difficult and it may ruin the scissors. Now it's in your best interest to allow the rhinestone chain to dry in place before you begin to put the glass on. After the rhinestone chain had dried, I removed the rabbit from the back and kind of cleaned up around the perimeter. And here I'm starting to put a little pink glass on the nose, but I end up putting something on after. And this is Ashland Decorative Filler. The main body is used with a color called yellow glass that they had on around Christmas time at Michael's. They do not have it anymore, but you can always pick up the silver reflective glass that you see me putting on his chest and color it with the Tamiya or the Krylon stained glass spray paints, or you can use alcohol ink to color it any color you want. And you can see I put some pink in by the ear, a little bit of pink by the nose, and then I took the silver reflective glass and used it um, to shade some areas. And then I did find a piece of jewelry to use for the rabbit's nose. And eventually I swapped that bead out for a uh, stone to use for the rabbit's eye. So um, the Ashland Decorative Filler, and you can find other kinds of crushed glass on Amazon, but I find that the Ashland Decorative Filler um, is the easiest to find, and um, they always carry the silver reflective glass. At the end here, you'll see me cleaning up with a piece of painter's tape. That's the easiest way to get the glass up off there without putting a bunch of fingerprints all over the glass. And at the very end here, you'll see me putting a little bit more pink glass in the bunny's ear. I put it in his other ear too. So as you can tell, this is a longer video cut down to one minute. It was actually 20 minutes, but it really is easy to do. Next, I laid out the stems in preparation for the flowers, and I also put the bunny tail on. The bunny's tail was made with fire glass mixed with Artist Loft iridescent medium, 
mixed in a bowl and then laid out to dry on nonstick paper. Next I started assembling the flowers and the flowers were made from actually clear tumbled glass that I had actually shaped before I tumbled into longer pieces. Then after they were tumbled I took the canary yellow stained glass spray paint and sprayed them all this beautiful yellow. And um, I think I ended up uh, with six of the uh, flowers, six flowers, four on the top and two on the bottom. Next, I took some tiny pieces of blue tumbled glass, and this was actually glass that I had picked up at a garage sale or thrift store, broken up, tumbled. And the thing with glass is when you just crack glass up, it breaks up in unpredictable ways. And this just happened to break up in teeny tiny uh, blue pieces. And I gathered them together to make the center of the flowers. Next, I went through some of my green tumbled glass to make the leaves for the stems, something that I often forget to put on till the very last minute, but this time I remembered. And then last, at the very bottom of the project, I put some tiny stones. In this container of stones, I did pick up at Michael's, and I thought it was perfect for the bottom. Next, I'm ready for the resin. The resin I used for this project is art resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup for three minutes. You mix it slowly to help prevent bubbles. And I went ahead and I drizzled it over the glass first and then up and around in the corners and the sides, being sure that um, everything is covered. The only thing that I did not cover with the resin this time was the yellow flowers. Because as I mentioned before, um, the lighter, translucent colors, when covered with resin, become even more translucent. So I was very careful to go in between the flowers and not on top of them. I just didn't want them to disappear in the background. They were such a pretty bright yellow. Um, I just didn't want them to disappear. So for the next two window sections, I decided I was going to do bluebell flowers. So I got out all my blue glass. This is glass I picked up at thrift stores and garage sales, broken up and tumbled in my tumbler for up to a week. And I pulled out all the small pieces of triangular glass to make the bluebell flowers. So for the next window, I cut some stained glass leaves for the bluebell flowers and I threw them in the tumbler overnight. I don't even know if I put them overnight. I might have only put them in for about six hours, but you can see even after um, six or eight hours, they are not sharp at all. The points aren't sharp. There's no threat of cutting yourself at all. And they, you know, they turned out nice, just smooth enough to use. And then next I started assembling the flowers on the project. And after I put the leaves at the bottom, I started putting all the stems up. Now the leaves, I actually did two or three layers to give it a little bit of dimension so that they weren't just laying flat on the glass. I wanted it to be a little bit higher than the stems. I got up toward the top part of the window. You can see I took the one stem and I carried it over into the other window to make it look like it... Um, you know, was part of the other window, that it wasn't just two separate projects that I was doing. And then I start putting all the little bluebell flowers on, and of course I put them on into the other window. You can see now how the flower carries over by the yellow flowers there. And then next I start putting the stones down at the very bottom like I did in the window next to it. And then next, I used the red glass again for the butterflies, and I actually end up putting three butterflies in this window with the two little uh, blue butterfly wings. And I thought that looked really cute with the three butterflies on there. It added a little more color with the red in there instead of just blue and green. About that time I realized I hadn't put the whiskers on the bunny rabbit, so I used the two millimeter rhinestone chains to do that, and I used the resin when I started resining um, this side to attach the rhinestone chains on the other side. Now the one thing I uh, do want to mention, so of course I just went ahead and resined this just like I did the other, but um, usually when you put resin over another area, 
that's already been resined like up in the top right corner there where I pulled the blue flower into the other window area um, you have to resin the whole thing but because there was a beginning and ending for this um, the window there you didn't have to go past there was like a barrier where the uh, flowers were so you really didn't have to go past that with the resin so you can see I put a little blue flower um, above the rabbit's ear also and because there was that barrier there the rabbit and the stem you did not have to re-resin everything and the same for the top you just had to re-resin the area that the flower the blue flower was in I did have to carry it all the way to the bottom but only on that left side there and of course, when this is done, it has to sit on a flat level surface, undisturbed at temperatures between 72 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. For the particular resin I'm using, you need to read the directions for the resin you're using because all resins are different. So for the final two squares, I decided I was going to make delphinium flowers, blue delphinium flowers. And I started by making the leaves and I cut out triangles and then rounded off one edge of each of the triangles and then threw these in my tumbler overnight. Next, I started setting up the leaves and the stems on the glass, and I do change this out a couple of times. I actually end up with five stems, but I take the two shorter stems off after and decide I just want three tall flowers instead of three tall ones and two short ones. And then I take my blue tumbled glass, these are the pieces that had broken into teeny tiny ones, and shape them into flowers. Use five little blue pieces of glass and put a large pearl in the middle and then towards the end you'll see the pearls are smaller I ended up taking each of the large pearls out and putting the shorter pearl or the smaller pearl in there and then I put the same stones at the bottom that I put on the bottom of the other two uh, window areas and um, then next I go ahead and resin it and I'm not going to go into detail about resining it because I did with the other um, two areas. Once I'm done with the resin in this area, I do take a cover and put it over that because I'm going to be working on the top area and I just don't want to get any sediment or anything into it. And I pretty much do the same thing on the top that I did on the bottom. The only thing is, is I got to the very top, um, I made it narrower and narrower. I was done with the flowers. I went ahead and put three butterflies at the very top just to continue on what I had done at the top of the other windows. And um, again, this is the tum uh, broken tumbled glass that I used. And then lastly, I resin the very um, last one. Now after this is dried overnight, I decide it needs a little something extra. I got out some red tumbled glass and I decided I'm going to add fl red flowers to the very bottom. Now this is UV resin. I don't know if any of you ever worked with UV resin, but this is kind of new for me. And I didn't want to have to put these little flowers on and then dump resin on and have to wait for it to dry overnight. So I decided I was going to try to do this with the UV resin. So what I did is I just put the little, I, so I want the, um, red glass to be shiny like the other glass on the project and I go ahead and I put UV resin on top of each of the little petals of the flowers I spread it around with a toothpick which makes it shiny and then I take the UV light and put it on top of it to set the resin then I take each individual flower and set it up on the project where I want it I put a yellow bead in the center and then I take a piece of green vitrograph glass and break it to make a stem. I put the light on the top to set it and I also put it on the bottom because um, UV light it can't go through anything opaque and those red flowers are pretty dark. Any resin that has seeped under the red flower you need to put the UV light under the flower to set the resin otherwise it won't set. So um, that's why I put it underneath too. I put it on top and I put it underneath. 
And as long as the UV resin is touching a little piece of the red glass and then a little bit of the glass underneath it, it will set just like regular resin does. And so I go ahead and I do this to every single one of them. I put the glass on, the bead on, just a little bit of resin so it's touching each piece of glass and the very top of that vitrograph glass. Set the UV light on top and then underneath and voila it's done it is so, so the easy last to thing work i with. did was put the antennae on the butterfly with a permanent marker and if you're putting it on the resin after the resin is dried and not just directly on the window before you put the resin on you can use any kind of a permanent magic marker hey everyone <laughs> i just have to show you something before i talk about this. I have my two of my cats here in a cat bed. They are so cute. Look at them. I'm going to bring the camera closer. They are just all bundled up. I bought a bunch of these big uh, cat beds and put them around the house because they love to sleep together. At least these two do. Louie, the one with the white and black, he wants to snuggle with anyone, including me, but they are just so funny. That's for those of you who like cats. <laughs> Hopefully you all do. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to bring you up a little closer to this also. I think this turned out so pretty. And I'm hoping the lighting is okay in this room. And um, the bunny was super, super easy. Um, and all the other glass has been tumbled except for this. This is the crushed glass with the rhinestone chain around it. But um, I thought this was so cool and so easy to add at the last minute instead of uh, pouring a whole bunch of resin over it. And um, easy to work with. And I'm going to be doing some more stuff with the UV resin. And um, this, like I said before, is all tumbled glass. And I even tumbled the stained glass. But you don't really need to do that. And you can actually do broken glass without tumbling it. You know, little pieces you can put on. You just have to be careful because it's sharp. But um, I'm going to set this back. <laughs> anyway, I, yeah, so I really enjoyed uh, making this. I took my time. You don't know how many different flowers I was going to do with this. This one, I pretty much knew what I was going to do. And then this one. But this one, I started by putting a flower pot at the bottom, and I was going to do geraniums. So I might end up doing geraniums in another one. But um, I changed my mind like five different times. I did this one, and you're you're better off doing them separate because um, otherwise all the dust gets in there and the glass can shift around. I, I don't know, around here I have cats jumping all over the place. So um, it, for me, it was in my best interest to go ahead and resin the parts as I finished it and doing one at a time. And then this, like I said, this sat blank forever because I didn't know. I changed my mind a whole bunch of times as far as what I wanted to do. But anyway, I think it ended up pretty um, cute. And actually, I could have come back with some more resin with that UV resin. And I might still do this and add a couple more blue uh, petals around here and build it up a little bit more. That might be pretty. And, you know, like I said, with the UV resin, you don't really have to resin everything in because you don't see it. Um, you can kind of sh shine up the leaves or the petals of the flowers first. That way you don't have to dump the resin on top of it and flood the whole area again. But anyway, um, I hope you learned something new. I'm going to be doing some more stuff with the UV resin, um, how I did these little flowers. I'm going to be doing some, some more things with it. So I'm just kind of learning about it now. And um, one thing I did notice that, so this was the J Diction resin, which is not supposed to have any um, VOCs. And so I just assumed that the UV resin didn't either. And I was just working with that little bit. Well, it really messed up my nose, that UV resin. So you have to wear a uh, respirator with it because, um, I, I mean, it really, really messed up my nose. And you think you're only using a couple drops. I guess it's just like that E3000 or E6000, whatever it is, it's just not good for you. So, um, the UV resin, next time I use it, I will be wearing a, a mask. 
But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. And if you enjoy the channel or just want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.